the arrows, it's okay. Good afternoon. We're at the low point where half of you are thinking very seriously about a nap. I'm gonna do my best to help you with that. Um, I actually gave a keynote once where someone fell asleep in the front row. It was, it was very disconcerting. <laughs> it felt bad. Um, this won't happen this time. So I've worked in the Commons for um, a little over 15 years. Um, I, was, uh, I established City of Toronto's Open Data Project. Uh, I was Chief Operating Officer at Mozilla, and for the last five years, I've been running Creative Commons as the CEO. And my flagship project uh, at Creative Commons has been CC Search a front door to the commons that indexes, ultimately, um, the entire collection of the commons. Uh, 1.4 billion works across over 9 million different websites with a catalog and an API that everyone can access. Now, CC Search today, and you can catch a demo of it over there, um, now indexes over 268 million works across 21 different collections with a goal of doubling that in the next year. So that catalog includes over 30,000 images from the Cleveland Museum of Art, uh, which were shared online just two days ago, yes, as part of their new open access initiative, uh, and we're very proud to help them do that work. Now, my slides today are going to feature only images from their collection. All the images you'll see are from the CMA collection. Uh, and I want to recognize Jane Alexander and Ethan Holda from the CMA, who are down front here, uh, and also Neil Stimler, who consulted with them. Now, I want to single them out for a couple of reasons. First, because what they've done is wonderful, and it is a gift to humanity, and it was an enormous, enormous amount of work. And I want to make an example of them, because what they did was a massive legal, programmatic, and technical undertaking that marshaled the resources of the entire organization, along with those of many other organizations. And to be honest, this work doesn't nearly get enough support, not inside organizations, not in the public, uh, and the support that it desperately needs. As a result, no surprise, the digital public domain is much smaller than it should be, and it is perpetually at risk. So this is what I want to talk to you about today. Now, collaboration lights me up. I love the things that people can only do together. I'm really interested in those things. And too much of our focus is only on individual achievement, and not nearly enough about how we build collective power and exert it together. Now, collect um, sorry, there's really, for me, no more valuable fuel for that than the commons and the public domain. By the way, next week, Eric Stoyer and I, who's also here, are launching a new podcast called Plays Well With Others uh, that is all about the art and science and mechanics of collaboration. So keep an eye out for that guy. Now, we're celebrating the public domain today, and we should. But we also face this growing challenge. We suffer from an overwhelming lack of sustainability in what maintains uh, these materials and access for the works in the digital public domain. And I'd say there's five interconnected factors, probably more, as to why this is the case. Um, but first of all, the challenges of navigating these ever-expanding rules of copyright and its various international terms and conventions. Now, this causes institutions, and especially their lawyers and their counsel, to insist that they remain locked up longer than needs be. The absence of a trusted database of all copyrighted works and related data, especially those works that are in the commons, the cost of preservation, of restoration, of digitization, of storage, of bandwidth, and software needed to enable access to those works, which is, compared to the potential need, massively underfunded. And a lack of standards for sharing and accessing those works, which constrains their use and innovation, and frustrates those who make the investment, because only to see their collections isolated or underused, never completely reaching their potential. And lastly, and I think really importantly, this absence of sustainable business models or just models to support the development and maintenance of these collections online, including redundancies of these collections to support a more resilient and performant commons. Now, the digital commons that we already have is also at risk. As the business models that have supported content creation on the web are breaking, even today we're watching news coming out of BuzzFeed with entire news divisions being laid off uh, and really talented creators losing their jobs. The commons is at risk of being caught up in this collapse. Today's debates about the future sustainability of journalism, of music, of academic publishing, of data sharing, UGC platforms, and photography omit the fact that much of the commons has rode along with those business models, and we have been the beneficiaries. We are dependent on this goodwill of those platforms and the commercial viability of those companies, whether they rise or fall. 
According to our most recent State of the Commons report, over one-third of the content in the Commons is hosted on for-profit platforms. Now, for consumers, we're seeing this rejection of advertising and surveillance capitalism and of artificial scarcity created by paywalls and DRM. This is a good thing. I'm super happy to see the end of those things. And they are, but they are also, and we have to acknowledge, the business models that have sustained huge portions of the commons. When they go, what is going to replace them? And where are we in that discussion? In the boardrooms, where new models are being conceived, there is little or no discussion of how to replace them with new ethical models that benefit the commons. And how much better would be if those new business models had the commons at the center of their business model, not as an add-on or a nice-to-have? Now, somewhere in this audience, you're going to find Ben McCaskill. He and his brother Don are the new owners of Flickr. Now, of those 1.4 billion CC-licensed works, about 450 million of them are on their platform. You likely know that they're moving to a new, slightly higher priced, paid model in order to make the business sustainable. And you likely also know that they have announced that they'll protect the CC licensed works they've been hosting and serving for all these years. Yes, thank you. Now, Ben and his team have decided not to sell your data or to pursue advertising models in order to make their business, new business, sustainable, which I think is commendable. But they have also had to make a mostly free service less free in order to do it. And that's had challenges and it's upset people. That's a tough problem and one sh we should want to help them work through because we rely on some of those platforms. Now the content ecosystem is struggling. Many sites have struggled financially. They've been sold, resold like Flickr. When others have dropped open licensing altogether, we've been bought by other companies. We're seeing a reduction of public and philanthropic funding to support this work, not an increase. Wikipedia is now putting pressure on big players like Google to fund them for using their works. There's a lot of discussion about this future of content creation, but very little of it is focused on our shared resources. And sectors like open education and academic publishing, which have been talking about new models for years, have yet to find the one that works. Sorry, I don't know how to solve this problem yet. And if you were hoping for that in the last 30 seconds of my talk, you're going to be disappointed. But it's why I'm here talking about it in front of all of you, because I said at the beginning, I think that some of the smartest, most dedicated, committed people to the open web are in this room right here, and I want to start this conversation with all of you. Solving this is central to the vision that I want to bring to Creative Commons, but CC tools are just one part of how we solve this problem, and I'm under no illusions that we don't have to do more in order to get where we need to go. And we're going to need to look beyond the traditional sectors that we've worked with in order to solve these problems. I especially want to think about how we engage, engage people who are creators and in the creative space to join those boardroom conversations and ask us and them, what do they have to win for us to win and how can we work together? I really believe that if we collaborate, we can do great things together. And I look forward to those discussions and I really welcome the opportunity to talk to you about them. Thank you.